Hey everybody, so if you look around the shop here, you'll probably notice that pretty much every bike is a complete production bike. Now recently I've kind of gotten the itch to build a bike from the frame up, and so in the first part of 2023, I'm gonna be focusing on building two bikes actually. Now coincidentally, they're both gonna be steel frames, and the second one I can't tell you about just yet, but what I have here is this. So this is the 2023 Kona Hanzo ST. It's a steel hardtail frame and size medium and the color is called Turismo Olive. It's kind of like green and gold metallic color and it's pretty sweet. Now historically the Kona Hanzo has become something of a cult favorite among steel hardtail fans. And so I'm really curious to see how this bike is gonna ride and what its capabilities are gonna be. Now this is the ST model and they just came out with the ESD model which is I think short for an extra slack dude or something like that. Now that model has an incredibly slack head tube angle at like 63 degrees so it's really raked out there. And I didn't want anything that aggressive so I went with the ST. Now the ST just I think stands for steel and in the newest iteration they've updated updated the geometry a little bit from previous years. This 2023 model has an updated head tube angle of 66 degrees, which is right there in that middle ground. It should be good for some reasonable aggressive trail riding, but not so slack that it becomes unwieldy. Now the frame material is chromoly butted steel, and so it's not a light frame. With the seat post collar, the dropouts, and the axle, this frame weighs in on my scale at 6.9 pounds or 3.1 kilograms, which is definitely not light, but that's not really what I'm after with this build. My goal for this build is for it to be a comfortable all day mountain bike that's not overkill for some of our local trails here. And I'm really curious to see if steel as a frame material really lives up to its hype as being lively and comfortable and compliant and you know, all those other descriptors that go along with steel frames. I'm also really excited to just kind of go back to my roots, so to speak, and just build up a very simple, functional mountain bike with no funky internal cable routing and no rear suspension linkages to deal with. Man, look at this thing. This is so cool. So as far as the build for this bike, I'm gonna use a mix of old and new parts. I've got a lot of parts here in the shop that I've accumulated over the years. I will get some new parts to round out the build, but the goal is to find some type of balance between cost and performance. So for the fork, this frame is actually designed around a 561 axle to crown, and I've got the stock revelation off the high tower, which is a 150 millimeter travel fork. So the axle to crown is a little bit longer than that. So actually one of the first things we're gonna do is to convert this 150 fork down to a 140 fork, which should put the axle to crown right at 561. Now wheels are probably the biggest thing that I'm going to purchase for this bike, and I'm going with the Hunt XC wide wheel set with an HG free hub, which will mate up perfectly with the Advent X 10 speed drivetrain that I'm planning to use. Now for tires, I'm gonna go with Terravail tires, and I already have a 29 by 2.6 honcho tire that I'm gonna put on the front. And then I got a brand new A-line in 2.5 inch width for the rear. Now for brakes, I went with the Shimano Dior 6100 series brakes, which is one step below the SLX brakes, but I found them for relatively cheap on Jensen, like something like $75 per brake. And so I figured I'd give them a try and compare them to the SLX brakes that I have on the high tower. Now the bottom bracket I did have to buy, pretty cheap, it's just your standard MT800 Shimano bottom bracket. And I'm gonna be running some new 170 millimeter SLX cranks on this bike as well. And then for the dropper post, I'm gonna be using the stock race face affect seat post that came on the high tower. It's only 125 millimeters a drop, but you know, I have short legs and I don't really need that much travel in a dropper post. Now for finishing kit, you know, handlebars, stem, saddle, grips, all that kind of stuff. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna use yet. I have some stuff here. I may get some new stuff along the way. Those things still remain to be seen. Right, so if you can't tell, I am very excited to build up this frame. It should make for a pretty decent series of videos. I'll plan to do some how-tos along the way, maybe just a general build video, and then of course some review videos as well. So I hope you'll stick around for that. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is to convert this 150 millimeter fork down to 140, just so that when I put it on the Hanzo, I can ride the bike first with its intended geometry and then make minor changes from there if I see fit. So if you're interested in following along, you can click to the next video in the series up here, which will be a how-to video on how to reduce the shock travel on RockShox forks. Now, if it's still some other random video that's not the how-to for this, that just means that I haven't made this video yet, but as soon as I do put the video together, it'll be right here. All right, well, I'm pretty excited for this build. Hope you'll follow along. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.